How are you? Welcome back to our series of uh, agriculture lessons. Uh, we've been uh, discussing uh, farm power in the previous lessons. In the last lesson, we looked at uh, the cooling system. And we said that a uh, tractor has uh, a cooling system which helps to reduce the heat that is being generated by the engine because this heat can have a lot of devastating effect on the engine. Okay, so the uh, two types of cooling systems that we discussed yesterday were the uh, water uh, cooling system and then we have the air cooling uh, system. So today our topic is electrical system and uh, I believe uh, you've come across uh, this term electrical system in your, uh, uh, you have come across the word uh, electricity in uh, physics, so you know what we mean. And uh, electricity is very important in a tractor. A tra that's why a tractor has an electrical system. And we are going to look at uh, the electrical system uh, exclusively. But we may not be able to go into fine details because what the examiner expects you to know is just the various parts of the electrical system and their functions. And maybe the function of the entire system plus the maintenance and uh, uh, practices on the electrical system. So today I want us to focus on just the key areas of the electrical system. Uh, one thing you need to note is that the electrical system has four circuits which are independent of each other. So it is a system, electrical system is uh, very complex in the tractor, it has four independent circuits but they are all connected to the battery. Okay, And the first circuit is known as starter motor circuit, the starter motor circuit. Okay. As the word uh, implies, the starter, uh, there, is, uh, there is a motor that starts the engine. It's a motor that starts the engine. Now, the starter motor is a component of the electrical system that converts electrical power into mechanical uh, energy. Okay? And this energy, this mechanical energy is used to rotate the flywheel and the flywheel is connected to the uh, crankshaft. And when the crankshaft rotates, it starts the strokes. And when the strokes start, then you switch on the engine. What you do is to produce a spark that will start the engine. It will start the power stroke and the engine will start running. So the whole idea is simply to start the stroke so that the, 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 you can switch on, uh, you can switch, you can uh, turn the ignition key and uh, start the power stroke during the, uh, start the, the, the power stroke. Now, when that happens, when the engine starts running, um, the starter motor circuit is disconnected from the engine because it is no longer required. Why? Because we are calling it starter motor circuit. The so work is simply to start the engine. So that uh, we now go to the ignition circuit. Uh, the ignition circuit uh, uh, is required uh, in order to produce a spark uh, during uh, in, uh, to, um, to uh, burn the air fuel mixture in the combustion chamber. So the spark is so important and it's produced by the spark prime. It is the one that starts, uh, ignites the air fuel mixture in the engine so that the engine can start uh, running. Then we have the generator circuit. As the word again uh, suggests, generator circuit is the one that generates uh, electricity that is either stored or used in the engine. Generator circuit, generator uh, circuit um, uh, is the one that produces electricity which is either stored in the battery or used in the engine. Okay. Then uh, lastly we have the lighting uh, circuit. Of course this one you know that it has uh, it's important in lighting. So we have the red lamps, we have the dashboard, we have the signals, we have the, you know, we have uh, the various uh, lights uh, in the tractor. So they rely on this uh, system. 
and uh, it is at this point that we are supposed to look at uh, the electrical system so that at least we understand uh, uh, some of those aspects that we have just discussed. The kind of diagram I have here does not have all these circuits, but at least you will be able to hear some of them being mentioned. Because if we draw the uh, full uh, circuit, electrical system, it will be so complicated because it has all those four circuits and we cannot uh, uh, afford to look at that complicated diagram. So what we have here is just a simple representation of our electrical system. Now, we have the first part here, battery. This battery is the ordinary battery that has 12 volts. It has six cells and each cell has two volts. Then the ammeter to measure, of course, the, uh, the, 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 the current. Then we have the ignition switch. When you switch this off, the current starts flowing. When you switch it on, it starts flowing. Now this voltage, the 12 volts are taken to this ignition coil. This is ignition coil. It is called a coil because it is made up of a primary coil and secondary coil. Secondary coil and a primary coil, you can see them here. So the whole idea of this is to increase the voltage from 12 to something like 6,000 so that it can be used to produce a spark in the spark plug. 12 volts may not be able, may not uh, be sufficient to produce a spark in the spark plug. And that's why you need to step it up, to step 12 volts to 6,000, so that this high voltage can be taken to the distributor here. Now this distributor has four terminals here. Then there is the rotor arm. So this is the rotor arm. Assume this is the rotor arm. Then when it starts rotating like this, when it touches this wire here, current starts flowing and it comes to plug number one. Then it continues with its journey to the next uh, terminal there. When it touches this wire here, again the current starts flowing and the, the current goes to the second spark plug here. Continues moving like that. When it reaches that point and touches this wire here, again the current starts flowing and it comes to the third spark plug and it produces a spark at that point. And then it continues uh, moving like this until all the spark plugs produce sparks. One thing you need to note is that uh, the distributor ensures that the sparks are produced at different times. They are produced at different times in different uh, cylinders on different combustion chambers. This is what we call an established firing order. So it is possible to have the first plug producing spark, then you go to the third one, then you go to the second one, then you go to the fourth one. That is the firing order. Because you cannot have all, this, all, all the cylinders, all the cylinders, okay, producing power at the same time. So they will be producing power at different times. And this, of course, enhances in the running of the engine to make sure that uh, the crankshaft is always rotating. And that's why they are being, uh, they are being, the, 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 they are being, uh, uh, the firing is, uh, is, um, uh, is, is, is not, at, is not uh, taking place at the same time in all the four uh, cylinders. So that is uh, the, uh, the, the, the system for you. So at least it gives you an idea. So at this point, I want us to look at uh, the different parts of the electrical system. We will not be able to look at all of them again, but at least we can, we can just look at some of those main parts of the electrical system. The first one is the battery. Now battery, of course, stores electric energy. Then we have the ignition coil. Ignition coil here. I told you the function of ignition coil is simply to, um, to do what? To step up battery voltage from 12 to 6,000 that uh, it, can, it, can, it can be enough to produce a spark uh, in the spark plug during uh, the combustion uh, chamber. Then we have the distributor. We say that a distributor distributes the high voltage current to uh, the spark plugs in a certain firing 